Hey, everyone, and welcome back to the Families Fly Free podcast. I'm Lynn Mettler, your host, and I'm excited to bring a guest to you this week um, who I've known for a long while, um, Brad Barrett of the Choose FI podcast, which I think probably a lot of you already listen to and know, um, but Brad definitely has um a vast amount of experience and travel rewards. And so I wanted to bring him on today just to share how he got started and how that works in the world of financial independence. So um, just to introduce him, um, Brad Barrett is the co-founder of Choose FI, which is the largest financial independence community in the world. Amazing. Um, and there they share the best life hacks, strategies, stories, tools, and resources to help folks take control of their money and get 1% better each day on their journey to financial independence. So their community includes the Choose FI podcast, which Brad hosts, as well as videos, articles, resources, calculators, and a Facebook community of more than 100,000 members. So welcome, Brad. <laughs> oh, Lynn, that was an amazing intro. I am delighted to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, you've accomplished some amazing things there that we can that we can get in your <laughs> yeah, intro. It's it's crazy to hear all all at once like that. But yeah, it's been a it's been a wild journey. And the funny thing is it all comes back to travel rewards. That's where it all started. Yeah. So um let's let's start there because I, I went and looked like, okay, now how did we come across each other to start with? Because I think we we're trying to remember that on your yeah. podcast. Um, but I think it was I I interviewed you for an article like maybe eight years ago when I um, was doing travel writing for for different outlets. So I think that's how we first came across one another. And um, and I was starting to learn about travel rewards then too. Um, and so why don't you tell us kind of how you you were in that world also, how you got started in that world. <clears throat> yeah, it is, uh, it's been more than a decade now, which is hard to believe. I guess my initial foray into travel rewards just generally before creating content on it was just like everybody else, when when I first found it, I'm like, wow, is this real? Can this possibly be true? And and Lynn, I mean, this was the wild, wild west days of, I mean, 10 plus years ago. So it's not, I think travel rewards is a lot more mainstream now than it yeah. was obviously 10 years ago. But even even today, people are like, is it could this possibly be real? And I mean, the punchline is, of course it is. It's very legitimate. I, I've tried to punch holes in it every which way to Sunday, and I'm I'm still looking for it. So it's been a, a universal good for me. But but yeah, I mean, back in whatever it was, 2012, I wound up finding an article on one of the uh, the original personal finance websites called Get Rich Slowly. Okay. And J.D. Roth is the creator there, and he had an article on the British Airways Visa card which I think at the time had a hundred thousand avios bonus. And I'm like, this sounds crazy, but the way he's talking about it there, there, I think there could be a lot of benefit for me because as you know, certainly one of the sweet spots of using avios is you can fly on American airlines. And at that time, U S airways, and I live in Richmond, Virginia, and we were from long Island, New York, and I could use those avios on U S air. At that point, it was only 9,000 round trip for that flight. Wow. So I was able to get 11 free round trips from New York to Richmond with <laughs> one credit card sign up. I kid Are you not. sure that's not too good to be true? I know, right? I mean, it sounds like it. But it's It was, uh, so it was, that was probably my best redemption of all time. I mean, from one credit card, I got 11 $400 flights at that point. That's what it cost. So we're talking $4,400 in free travel just from signing up for one credit card and knowing that sweet spot. So it was like, okay, this is amazing. And then I got started actually creating a personal finance website called richmondsavers.com. So I live in Richmond, Virginia. We save money. Terrible name of a website, but richmondsavers.com, right? And I realized, okay, just like you, families fly free, right? There are millions of families like ours that just want to travel that just want to take one, two, I know, I know you think certainly and espouse that you can do more than that per year, but, but I, I have, I have maybe smaller aspirations. Like, can I take one close to free vacation every year? And, and for me, that was at that point with young daughters, that was a trip to Disney world. 
Yeah. And I wound up putting together this trip to Disney. And I know you you probably want to talk about this later, but found some little insider hacks that I think I was the first person to really break, which was kind of cool. And I published an article on that. And then it got featured in this massive article in the New York Times. And that just kind of set the stage for all the kind of content creation and and really choose if I everything came from that one like that was the wow. lead domino that started everything was that that Disney World article interestingly enough yeah and then you ended up you had kind of a like a course you could go through right about how to to do Disney with travel rewards and cards yeah it uh, so it's funny and, and this is I, I think this will be interesting to your audience. So I'll take I'll take a minute or two just to describe it, which was, yeah, I had a step by step plan for this Disney World trip. It still exists on richmondsavers.com. Uh, and it's literally it's just you, you can't mess it up. It's the easiest trip in the world, because as you know, Southwest, you're the biggest proponent of Southwest the, yeah. around. <laughs> Southwest is simple. Orlando MCO has such an amazing Southwest presence. The. Uh, park tickets are really easy when you use a card like Capital One Venture. Only when you buy the tickets at a place called UndercoverTourist.com, which is actually an authorized reseller. That was that was the thing that I broke because if you buy Disney tickets through Disney, at least at the time, I think this is still true today. Yeah. It doesn't code as travel for Capital One Venture, mm -hmm. but if you buy them from Undercover Tourist, it does. So anyway, very long story short is. Uh, yeah, I wound up I wound up having that, but then I I wound up okay, I'm a CPA right. in my real life and and I know my little site richmondsavers.com is never going to be a massive the points guy or getting millions of visits, but how could I potentially turn this into a business? That was where my mind went, and I wound up offering free one-on-one -on -one coaching. So it was literally free. I know I mean Lynn, I kid you not at my lunch hour, I'm a, I'm a corporate tax manager, CPA at my lunch hour. I had a noon call and a 1230 call probably basically every day. So we're talking 10 calls a week and I would chat with people. I would, I mean, people from the internet would get on the phone with me and mm -hmm. I would answer questions and then I would just draft them up a plan, not just for Disney world, but for Paris or Hawaii or wherever it was. And then they would use my credit card links on my website. And that's how I would get compensated for it. So it was this like win-win all around. And now obviously you can't scale one-on-one. -on -one. So then I wound up starting a website called travelmiles101.com, which had a free email course. And I think, so it's all kind of uh, inextricably linked here, like one step to the other. And yeah, Lynn, that was, that was eight and a half years ago. And when I started Travel Miles 101, and that's when I left my, my corporate career. So it's been, we're coming up on nine years at this point. Well, I remember reaching out to you, I don't know when it was, maybe five years ago, just because there were several of us in the travel reward space. And we were like, oh, do you want to, we were going to put together a mastermind. And you're like, actually, I just started the, or I started this podcast and it's just really taken off. And I was like, <laughs> oh, wow, I have to go check this out or whatever. So how how did that come to be? Yeah. So Choose FI is what I've been doing for, it's almost seven years ago to the day I met uh, my co-founder Jonathan Mendonca and yeah I mean it's wild how how just these like little serendipitous moments in life work he wound up and again it, it all comes back to travel rewards interestingly enough he heard me on the mad scientist podcast which is another big podcast in the financial independence world and it was me and uh, my co-founder of travel miles 101 Alexi Zemsky we were chatting with with Brandon the mad scientist on the podcast and this random guy, Jonathan in the audience, just listening to the podcast is like, Oh, this guy, Brad lives in Richmond, Virginia. He's into financial independence and he's into travel rewards. I'm all of those things too. I live in Richmond. <laughs> right. And he just randomly reached out to me through the contact form on my website and Hey, you want to grab lunch? And for whatever reason, I didn't hit delete. And I said, yes. And I mean, that was the moment that started everything for Choose Up I would really three months later. And there's some interesting backstory, but it probably not all that germane to today's conversation. But uh, where, yeah, I mean, we just we got started and then Choose Up I really just took off like a rocket ship, which has been it's just been a wild journey. 
Yeah. It's, I mean, I think my journey too, it's a lot of who and people, you know, I think you helped me a lot at the beginning of my journey too. I mean, it's just like, we all have helped one another, I think. And it's just interesting. Yeah. That it's people. It's all about the people. (laughs) It's always about people. And this is what so many people miss, right? With like, Hey, we're living in this internet age and my quote unquote friends on Facebook or followers on Twitter, like as if those things matter, they don't matter. I mean, I guess they matter to some weird vanity metric, but they don't really matter. What matters, and this this is what transcends just you and I and travel rewards and content creation and all that other nonsense. This is for everybody. Like relationships matter. They matter more now probably than ever because we have so little of them in our in our regular day-to-day world. Obviously, COVID over the last number of years, like we're lacking something and we crave it so desperately as as humans. And and it really matters. Like I can point to virtually every bit of success I've had professionally in the last 10 years with all these random websites to people, yeah. not to, not to a piece of content that I created that was just so miraculous that, you know, Wait, like, <laughs> so yeah, it's wild. It's wild. Well, thanks for sharing that. That's a, um, it's a fascinating story. Um, just to see, yeah, where, how people end up where they are. I always love, love to hear that. Um, so if we go back to travel rewards and, you know, when you were first getting started in it and you heard about the British Airways card, um, did you make any major mistakes, you know, along the way? I always like to point those out because inevitably we all do. And then you can be like, oh, that person who's really an expert. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Or did you struggle with any part of it, you know, in the beginning? I think I struggled just getting on board. I think that was the biggest thing for me was just like, this cannot possibly be true, right? Like this can't be real. There has to be some catch. I'm I'm not like a conspiratorial person by any, by any measure, but it just didn't seem possible. And I think frankly, like maybe some people listening to this podcast are still waiting to get started because they just are looking for that catch. And I mean, like I said, 10 minutes ago, I have tried every which way to figure out like, is this going to hurt my credit rating? Is something bad going to happen? Is this going to cost me? Is there some catch somewhere? And the simple fact is there isn't. I've yet to find it. I think the only thing, and and, and this is where people get caught up and, and, and I was not great at this Lynn at the beginning, but I, but I've become much better is I think just, just like record keeping. And that, that's maybe a, a bad phrase, but just like making sure you're on top of everything is is maybe the most important part and i think for a lot of people they they just don't want to be bothered right like oh that's too hard it's not that hard you just you open up excel you put a couple things in there you just need to put like hey when did i open this credit card all right i've got three months to hit this spending bonus i really don't want to miss that right like that's a catastrophic mistake is opening a card thinking you're going to get the bonus And then missing it because of just some silliness. Like I didn't get to the 4,000 minimum spend in the first three months. And like, wow, I lost out on a 60,000 point bonus. That's probably at two cents per point worth $1,200 to me. Like if I missed $1,200 because I just was silly, I'd be really, really mad at myself. And I, I have seen people do that. So that's something it took me a little bit to get, to get it set up. And, And it's not like a difficult system by any means, but, but I think, if I could advise one thing for people to, to try to get over, like what is one of the most common mistakes I've ever seen is just make sure you're on top of this stuff, whatever works for you, set calendar alerts or put it in a to-do list or whatever, like, Hey, this credit card's coming up on 12 months. I need to make a decision. Do I keep it? Do I call for reconsidering? Do I call to see if they can offer me something? Like, do I close the card? Like you just have to stay on top of it because I think as you get further and further down the line, like, you know, you're going to have a couple cards, maybe more, and you need, you just need to be organized, like have all your logins organized. So, um, yeah, luckily I never really had a catastrophic issue, but, but yeah, I've seen that a lot, Lynn. I I mean, you know, I could probably fish for something like, you know, have I done the best redemptions all the time? No, of course not. But like, I I think that's okay. But yeah, that, that's, I'm a big believer in, you don't have to best have to have the best redemption. Use your points how you want to use them. There's plenty more to be had. So (laughs) I love you know, it. don't I love get hung up there. That's how yeah. I think. I think that's my favorite thing about your message is just like the abundance mindset of this is like, 
you can do this. Like you don't have to be limited even by like my limiting belief of, oh, I probably can only do one or two vacations a year. Like you're like, I mean, that's it. That's the floor, right? Like, I mean, oh yeah, it, <laughs> obviously. So uh, yeah, I love, I love that part of your message for sure. Thank you. Um, could you talk a little bit about, you know, being afraid of credit cards um, from the FI perspective and the way you guys look at that? <clears throat> yeah, this is something that is so important. And, and, you know, to be honest, we have a lot of people in the financial independence community who are basically recent graduates of Dave Ramsey. Yes. Right. <laughs> so like they are, they are looking for something more. You get to whatever it is, baby step seven. And you're like, okay, there's really nothing here. What do I do? And then I think a lot of people go search and because their financial world is solid then. Right. I think Dave Ramsey for his many ills, it has done a wonderful service for tens of millions of people who are in just like an absolute catastrophic financial yes. situation. Right. So like, but once you've graduated from that, like that stuff is really not going to help you. In fact, it's going to hinder you in, in my opinion. And credit cards are really the perfect example of that. Like for, if you're not using your credit card as a, as a tool, like when you, you talk about all the time and I talk about with travel rewards, like you are foregoing many, many thousands of dollars of value every single year. Just foregoing it for no reason because some random guy on the internet or the radio told you credit cards are evil. Okay. So that said, and I'm going to keep caveating here, is credit cards are very dangerous for many people, right? Tens of millions of people get in credit card debt, and that is a very hard cycle to get out of, especially at 30% interest rates or whatever it is you're paying. So my biggest piece of advice to anyone listening or to anyone in our community is you have to be responsible with credit cards. Like I drill this into people's heads. Like you have to pay on time and in full every single month, period, end of story. And then ideally, and it's hard to quantify this, but don't spend any more because you're using a credit card instead of debit or cash or whatever, check or whatever, uh, like antiquated nonsense people people use, right? So like- People use checks? I, 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 I actually saw someone in the grocery store <laughs> recently do that still. Oh, it's so funny. Um. But yeah, so I think like it's it's mostly the caveats. It's pay on time and in full every single month, right? Like if you can do that, then I think this is an absolute bonanza for people, right? Like using their credit cards responsibly and instead of getting 1%, 2% cash back or rewards, whatever they're used to. And I mean, honestly, then most people are reasonably happy, right? Like they get a couple hundred dollar check at the end of the year. And they yes. think they're winning. I think that's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which it's better than than just using your debit card, right? Without a doubt. Yeah. I mean, a debit, like in terms of credit versus debit, I cannot imagine that people are still using debit cards. Like it doesn't make any sense to me to expose your your checking account. The fraud right. limits are different. Like it, credit cards are so wonderful. They're so safe. Like the that's fraud protection point. on them, right? Like yeah. it's it's remarkable. But again, you have to have some level of responsibility and control over them. But once you have that, as you know, I mean, you can get many, many thousands of dollars of value from those smart credit card habits and, and putting as many of your life expenses on those credit cards as you possibly can. And as you said, no more than that, only things you were going to be buying anyway. Um, but yeah, and I just like to point out there that it's not the credit cards that are bad. Credit cards are just a thing. Yeah. <laughs> right? It's how we use them that are good or bad. So if you can use them responsibly, like you said, and not incur interest, and I like to teach pay it off every day or every other day, if you are a person who struggles at the end of the month with, oops, I forgot I put that on there, you know, and there's now not money in the bank to cover it, but that's a way you can try to function like a debit card but yeah. get the benefits of a credit card, you know? I, I love that. And I was, yeah, I was just introduced to that by a friend of mine who has a pretty big YouTube channel, uh, Bob Sharp. And and yeah, it's ex almost exactly what you just described. It's like, I mean, literally you could even put, put those items you put on the credit card into a, a bank register, right? Like your check register and just treat it as if it was a debit card and then mm -hmm. just pay it off. Like you're saying, you can pay it off in any frequency you want. Right. As long as you're on top of it, again, that comes back to what I said about being organized. If you can stay on top of this and the behavioral side is the hardest part, the psychological side, right? Like, so if you can kind of hack 
any potential weakness. And I don't mean that with the negative connotations, but like any, we all have behavioral and psychological weaknesses. That's we're human beings, right? Like, but if you can know yourself and then figure out a workaround for that, then yeah, like that's wonderful. And just then move forward and get the many thousands of dollars of benefits every year. And another thing I wanted to ask you that I just thought of was, um, I find that the Phi community has a great mindset about, um, like a lot of people will be like, well, I don't want to do travel rewards because that credit card has a $99 annual fee, right? Let's just use that as one example. But there are some costs associated, but having the mindset that that is really an investment and not an expense. So I wonder if you could, it just seems like the Phi community really gets that. <laughs> the yeah. mindset is correct there and why that is, I'm not sure, but maybe you could address <laughs> that. Yeah, that's cool. I, I I think people in the financial independence community, we, we look at like the rules of the game, like the playing field and, and just understanding like there are certain rules to this game, like actually board games. It's funny, like board games are probably the number one hobby in in the Phi world. So like, I oh, think wow. a lot of us, yeah, it's it's so interesting. It's like one of those weird ties that bind uh, across a large swath of the community. And I think it's just like, you understand the rules of the game, right? So, okay, I can look at a card with a big annual fee, like a Capital One Venture X. Mm -hmm. And do I really, in my perfect world, that I forget, is it, Three hundred ninety-five dollars, uh -huh. or it's somewhere around that right now. Yeah. So, uh, and Lynn is nodding for for anybody listening to this. So, yeah, <laughs> obviously she's the expert. I'm just uh, I, I'm doing this uh, off off the top of my head. But let's let that's the perfect example, right? Is like, wow, that is a big figure that I don't ideally want to spend three hundred ninety-five dollars just for the sheer right to hold this credit card. But then you survey the field and you look and oh. You mean I get a $300 annual travel credit on that? Oh, that's pretty good. So that then nets it to a $95 annual fee, right? As long Again, as long as I'm organized. Because if you forget about that $300 annual travel credit, well, then you're right back to, oh, damn, this thing cost me $395, right? So, but, so we'll say we're at a $95 net expense. But then last I checked, you get a 10,000 point annual bonus. Yes. which then, so that at worst is worth a hundred dollars. And because Capital One Venture Points are now transferable, it's probably worth more, but let's even say worse. So now we're at a positive $5. They're paying us $5 each year to hold that card. And you also then get things like Priority Pass, which Lynn, I don't know about you, but I've used Priority Pass for my Venture X so many times in the last yeah. handful of months. It's wonderful. So it I mean, is. right, it's, it's amazing. So again, that's understanding how the world works. It's it's actually looking into this. Or frankly, many of these annual fees you might get on a, a hotel credit card, you might get a free night. And that's probably going to net to about what it costs. Or Southwest, you get an annual point bonus. Like it it mitigates the fee, or or frankly, some of them just don't really give you anything. Like Chase Sapphire Preferred is one of my favorite cards. And to my knowledge, unless uh, things have changed recently. You don't really get anything for that $95 annual fee, but I understand that, hey, when I signed up for this, my the 60,000 point bonus that I got at the time was probably going to be worth about 1200 bucks to me. So then I net it with the $95 annual fee and I'm like, okay, I'm still pretty happy with an $1,100 net, net bonus. And I, I understand that that is a net bonus, but then every year subsequently that I keep it open, obviously I'm paying that $95. And that's fine. Like I'm doing that, Lynn, for, for for me, it's because I have a big store of ultimate rewards points and I don't want to really just transfer them speculatively to and then close the card. So I'm paying that $95 for really optionality in that sense. So I'm doing that with eyes wide open. And I think I think that might be, and I, I appreciate the compliment on the on behalf of our community, certainly, but I think that's how people try to view the world is like, okay, there's, there's cost benefits. And I just need to just judge what the situation is for me, that $95 that I pay on my Sapphire preferred every year, that's worth it for that optionality of, all right, I've got 400,000 points. I don't want to just zip them all over to Southwest. I want to be able to maybe use some United, maybe use some Hyatt, maybe use British Airways for one of those amazing sweet spots. So yeah, I know that's a very long answer to, to your question, but I, I think it's important because I, I think I think it's important to really think through these kind of things. Yeah. And I liked how you said 
the cost benefit analysis. That's a good way to look at it of what am I getting from this and what is it costing me? And do I want to continue? And I mean, for me, I think the way I, you know, we teach it is simple, not opening a bunch of cards, but say Chase, Chase Sapphire Preferred, like we're talking about, or Capital One Venture X, like just holding those gives me the ability to earn points on my spending. Like even that is worth $95 to me because I couldn't, I couldn't do that with my debit card. Right. And I don't, yeah. it's free, but I don't have the option to be leveraging my expenses to earn free travel with them without the help of these cards. Yeah, that's And then you get all these other perks on top, but <laughs> like you know, that. even that's worth it. Don't you think? Yeah. And right. Obviously I, I was, I was uh, like with Sapphire preferred and you get the, the rental car benefit, the rental car insurance. So I mean, the like, benefit of that one, the primary car rental insurance. <laughs> yeah. That's an amazing one. So yeah, I mean, I could basically make a case for virtually every annual fee, which is really interesting because frankly, eight years ago, I thought paying annual fees was the worst thing you could do. And it was silly. And, and, and I've really come full circle on that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm glad we, we talked through that one because I, I hear that a lot. All right. So tell us, you know, um, how does travel rewards, you know, fit into those who are on the journey to financial independence? Yeah, I think, and, and Jonathan and I at Choose If I have really made it what, what we call one of our pillars of financial independence. I, I think it's in really an integral part of the path to five because so many of us and this is painting a broad brush, obviously, but but I've noticed anecdotally that so many of us just love to travel. That seems to be another big, big mm-hmm. thing in the in the FI world. And and I mean, if you can, uh, as Jonathan always likes to say, normally you have to use your post tax dollars on on travel. But if you could, so let's say you're taking a trip that's six thousand dollars. Well, you're paying that with post tax dollars, so that's probably. $10,000 in your actual salary, right? Like it's an interesting kind of rethink. That's a, a massive portion of someone's someone's annual salary. And if you're telling me, wow, I can take one or two or in Lynn's version, three, four, seven trips a year, like every single year for virtually free. And obviously neither of us would ever say travel rewards is completely free. It is, you know, there are these little, little fees, even down to the $11 and 20 cents, right? Like, it, you know, we're, if we're being very, very technical, but, but I mean, it's as close to free as, as you can get. And if you can, if you can wipe out a massive portion of your budget and just make it because, okay, my smart financial habits. And I think that's, that's the fun game part of it. It's like, wow, I'm really winning here, right? Like I'm taking my smart financial and credit card habits and I am rocking this, right? Like I'm and taking- that is so fun, right? Isn't it? Isn't yes. it amazing? Like it's just so much fun. It's like the gamification of, of yeah. personal finance. And I think that's a lot of what we try to do is like, there's nothing about the path to financial independence that I look at as like, like a drag or deprivation. Like I look at it as this fun way to win at life. Like I am living the same middle or really frankly upper middle class lifestyle as everyone around me in my neighborhood. And I am saving 50% of my income and I'm getting I'm traveling the world for essentially free. Like that is so amazing, Lynn. Like that bring as you can hear in my voice, like that brings me pure joy. Yeah. Just a couple little tweaks. Like you can live the same lifestyle as everybody else. And just win, win, win. Like that is just so much fun. So a couple things I wanted to um, break down there. So you talked about the tax part of things, which I love looking at it that way. Because you're, I think I've heard you guys say like, you're not paying taxes when you're using points. Like, so that's like tax free, right? right? You're saving yourself money as you just explained there, because you're not having to use your post-tax dollars. Yeah, it's a why it's kind of an interesting rethink. And the, and yeah, this in fairness to Jonathan, this was always his thing. And, and uh-huh. he could probably explain it a little better than me, even though I'm the I'm the CPA. But like, yeah, I mean, when you think about like, I, I don't think most of us think in terms of okay, our spending is actually money we've already been taxed on. So you really have to kind of gross it up, depending on what your tax rate is. For most people, they're going to be in the 22% federal marginal rate, and then their state tax. So even say like, 
is kind of their marginal tax rate, like that, that those terrible. last dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a lot. So, yeah. so you can kind of essentially, and the math doesn't work quite this way, but you can essentially multiply anything you spend times 1.3 to get, oh, what does this actually cost me in my salary? Because I think that's how most of us think of, of what, what do we earn? We think of our salary, but then that money gets taxed and only after the tax do you then have money to spend. And that's what you would normally spend on travel. So you really have to essentially gross it up by that 30%. So um, it, again, this is just a, a mindset of way, the way to look at it. And I'm not one, even though I'm a CPA, I'm not one of these like make decisions to save on tax. Like people, people get crazy to kind of avoid paying tax from like right, right, some right. weird, like, you know, it, anyway, it, it, neither here nor there, but some kind of, you know, political things and whatever. That's not me at all, but it's just a cool way to look at it as, oh, wow, that $5,000 trip that I'm taking was actually probably about $6,500 or maybe even a little bit more of my actual salary. So I'm saving even more by using travel words. I think that's the big takeaway okay. is like, you're actually saving even more than you think. And so another thing I wanted to talk about there was, um, you know, I think that using travel rewards is, of course, it's great at any time, but I think it particularly fits, you know, with FI and also like if you're just having to tighten the budget for any reason, like the FI community is tightening budget because they're trying to save as much as possible. But if you just find yourself with fewer funds right now or whatever, travel rewards lets you keep traveling, right? Like you don't have to say, well, I can't travel anymore because now I've got to be putting everything I have towards savings. It brings joy to your life if you like to travel, right? So yeah. I don't know what thoughts on that. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I love it. I mean, I, I think any way that you can, like I said before, not deprive yourself, right? Like I, to me, one of the most important aspects of like winning at life is, is thinking long-term. And I think a lot of what we look at as, okay, I'm going to go on a diet or I'm going to go on a budget right? Like they're the same thing. They're about short-termism and I'm just trying to get to that goal. And then the subtext is most likely I'm going to go back to where I was beforehand, but I've, I've reached this like arbitrary goal as opposed to setting up systems. So it's systems versus goals, right? Like setting up systems that will help you for the long-term. So when you can set up a system for your health or your wealth, that just works that it works on autopilot, that you don't have to worry about willpower all the time. Like, I think that kind of long-termism is really the key to success in life. I just, I think that that is the differentiation point between success and failure, frankly. that That's my own view on life. And yeah, I mean, clearly to me, if you are living in a deprived state just to reach some short-term goal, then you're going to rebound at some point and kind of go crazy. So travel is one of, I mean, you know, both of us, like it's one of the joys of life, right? And if you are depriving yourself of that just to save money or to hit some, I, I kind of flippantly said 50% savings rate and to people who aren't in the financial independence community, that might sound insane. And that's not a requirement by any means for <laughs> to be in the FI community, but but it's aspirational, right? And just like if you're saving 0% of your income right now, saving 10% is aspirational. And that's wonderful. And you, you have to make moves to get there. But if you're constantly living in a state of deprivation of I'm cutting, cutting, oh, I wish I could do these things. I wish I could do them. This is not going to work for you. It, it's mm -hmm. just simply not. But man, if again, like we talked about before, if you can build fun and winning at life and gamification into something like travel rewards and and save money at the same time, then you're just, you're rocking it. Yeah. Well said. Thank you. So tell us how you use travel rewards now today. How do they fit into your life? Yeah. Travel rewards. So it's interesting. I, I think my entire, and, and I still do certainly use them, uh, but my entire like out, outlook on life has changed a little bit recently in the sense that my daughters are growing up really, really fast. I've got a 15 year old and a soon to be 12 year old. And I realized that the time is 
running out. And I yes, don't mean indeed. that in such, right. It's crazy. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, I, I'm trying and we're, we're all trying to travel much more now. Yes. Which is awesome. Do it before they leave home. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly. So we're trying to be very mindful of the time. So in terms of like the order of operations, like grasping that time is so important. And so we've been taking a lot more impromptu trips, but for me, then it looks like, all right, can I use rewards? Like we actually just went down to Universal Studios on like a super spur of the moment trip two weeks ago. And we literally planned it like six days before. Mm -hmm. And I wound up having some JetBlue flight, uh, JetBlue points just sitting in my account that honestly, when I, I know I talked about being organized, but I completely forgotten about it. I logged in. I'm like, oh, wow, they're 70,000 points. Uh, so it was great. Like JetBlue was one of the direct flights from Richmond to Orlando. So I was able to use all those points and it was awesome. Like I use, I, I, I go for simplicity now. So I love, obviously I love Southwest. We don't have a big Southwest presence at all at Richmond. So it's, it's not as wonderful. We don't even fly. I checked this morning, actually the Richmond airport Wikipedia page. It was like, they don't even fly to Baltimore to send me like all, all these other places, but at least we go through, we go through uh, Atlanta, which, which gives me a lot of options, but I use Hyatt hotels all the time. I yeah. love transferring love Chase Ultimate Hyatt. rewards to Hyatt. Mm -hmm. That's just like probably the thing that I use the most on a, on a year to year basis. And yeah, I have a couple big trips coming up in 2024 that I am trying to now use. So I have, I probably have 800,000 points, various points lying around in, in different accounts, mostly Ultima Rewards. And I am hoping to use them for round trip flights to England and uh, Spain next year. We're going to go to actually see Taylor Swift in England. Which Ooh. Is, <laughs> Can I go? Which, yeah. Oh man. It is so great. <laughs> She's, she is amazing. So, uh, so yeah, I have eight months ahead of time to book flights. So I'm working on that right now and I might be going to Japan next year. Wow. So ideally looking to maybe fly business or first class on a and a or J A L. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I maybe, maybe, maybe in 2024 have a big, big travel rewards year coming up. Are you going to go to Tokyo Disneyland? That is a good question. I don't know. I So <laughs> this might be a non-family trip. This might be kind of a guy's trip. But uh, my daughters are huge, as as you kind of guessed there. They're huge amusement park and roller coaster fans. So uh, I there is one big roller coaster that's temporarily closed uh, right near Mount Fuji, actually that I promised my daughter when it opens, it's like one of the top five roller coasters in the world. When it opens, if it ever opens, we'll, we'll go back. But, uh, but yeah, <laughs> TVD on that. Yes. Well, and I love, <laughs> you know, like chase ultimate rewards and flexible points like that are so great. Like you talked about your impromptu trip too. Like those are handy because you just have them sitting there and yeah. you can, I did the same thing earlier this year. I just took an impromptu solo trip to Disney, like same thing, like five nice. days before. And you know, like, you can do that. Yeah. I'm not a big super planner. So I always like to point out that as long as you've got the point sitting around, again, use them however you want. It might cost you more than it would have if you'd planned six months ahead. Who cares? Yeah. Go do it. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. And that's why, yeah, I love <laughs> ultimate rewards points. They're my favorite just because I, I generally transferable points. But for me, again, with the simplicity and ease at the heart of it, I love ultimate rewards because I just... I think Southwest and Hyatt, frankly, are the two absolute easiest programs to use. I love them. And then I get a lot of benefit from United and and some kind of, sometimes those sweet spots with the British Airways points. So it's like, man, I've got access to every single airline alliance just by having these points. I have access to Hyatt. Like, this is fantastic. You know, so just having that flexibility, it's it's really cool. So would you say Chase Sapphire Preferred is your favorite card or do you have a different one? Yeah. Yeah, I, I would say that's probably the card that I would advise people to get started with. You know, if they're not, obviously, if you're going for a Southwest Companion Pass, that's a separate issue. But like, I think it, it's hard to give broad advice. But yeah, like my my broad advice is all things equal, Sapphire Preferred, it's hard to go wrong. With. And are you liking Capital One Venture X? You mentioned that a few times, so. Yeah, I like it. I in all candor have not used the transferable points yet. Yeah, I haven't so, used it that way either. Yeah, they're flexible. 
Yeah, I love book the, anything. <laughs> it's amazing, right? Like yeah. you just nobody cares if you have points. You just book your travel using the card. So yeah, I mean, I've I've enjoyed the Venture X, you know, again with that. Okay, I get that travel credit, I get the annual point bonus, and I get the lounge. Like I've used it mostly for the lounge access, and I'm not gonna lie, like that is just fun. It, it just feels like you're winning at life when you like you roll into an airport. Like we just did it actually at at MCO and. Uh, yeah, just got to hang out. We were at the airport a little bit early and spent an hour, had some breakfast, had some, you know, it was, it was really nice. It was, it was super chill. So to get access to, I think there, I forget the exact number, but like 1300 priority pass lounges that are uh, accessible via that. It's, I mean, it's hard to beat that. Yeah. It's just a nice, like if you're going to be traveling a lot, cause you are now flying for free uh-huh. or, you know, you might as well enjoy some little luxury perks like that. It just makes things so much nicer when you're, when you are flying a lot to be able to get out of the chaos of the airport. Totally agree. Okay. One last question. Um, Do you have a favorite trip that you've taken using miles and points? Yeah. I mean, we've had so many, I, I think there's something about this one trip to Bermuda that I just loved so much. And, uh, it, it, because it just felt like, like a luxurious vacation that my wife and I would never have taken before. And I think that that's what, so we've had so many successes with travel rewards, but like as, as crazy as it sounds, they've almost become commonplace, but like, that's what separates this one in my mind is like, (laughs) right. Isn't it wild? Like we stayed at the, uh, the Fairmont there are two. I think it's Mm -hmm. the Fairmont Hamilton princess. I think it was, uh, this was back when there was a Fairmont card that gave two free nights, uh, for each card. So my wife and I each opened it. And then there was something like deep in the the details where you could potentially get a suite upgrade if it was available. And so we were able to get these brand newly renovated suites at this crazy expensive Fairmont in Bermuda. And for just by opening up this credit card for each of us. And I mean, Lynn, I kid you not, we rolled into this suite and it was like, it was the one on the website. <laughs> like it was, it was what you saw when you saw like, oh, wow, that's the brand new renovated suite. And we were just doing car wheels. It was amazing. And that was another one we were able to use that British Airways sweet spot. I, I can't remember if it was US Air or if it was because uh, this is a while ago or, or American Airlines. But yeah, we flew, we dropped our daughters off at our in-laws in on Long Island, New York, and then took a flight out of, out of I think it was JFK. And it was only like, or something crazy like because Bermuda is not that far it yeah, was only 15,000 avios round trip instead of I think because it's technically international it would have been and I, I'm I'm calling on this from a decade ago from memory but it would have been I think 35,000 American Airlines miles round trip so it was like wow we only spent 30,000 avios instead of 70,000 American Airlines miles and it was like I just, I love that. It just, that, that makes me feel so great. So it was a super luxury trip. We got this amazing flight redemption. It was just, it was super cool. Yeah. And then a super luxury hotel stay for free too, right? Yeah. Not too shabby, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so everyone, these are the kinds of things you could be doing if you haven't started this. So um, anything else you want to share, Brad, that we didn't touch on? No, I mean, you really, you covered it wonderfully. I th- I think hopefully we, we got the message across of like, you know, this is fun. This is something you can do. There's like, you just have to stay a little bit organized. It, this is very doable. You have smart credit card habits and and you can really win and you can just take multiple trips a year and and it just, it works. And it's it's really, really fun. And I love that you vetted, you know, as a CPA, as a financial expert, it really isn't too good to be true. You've been doing it for longer than I have now. And like I said, you've yet to find any. Yeah. yeah. Most, most things in life, if they seem too good to be true, they are. Right. This That's is not the one problem, of them. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This truly is not one of them. This is yeah. uh, a remarkable thing. And, and in fairness to the credit card companies, great credit, like they've made this harder, like 10 or 11 years ago, it was the wild, wild west, right? Where you could open, I mean, there were people who would literally open seven of the same American Airlines cards in like a five month span. Like it was craziness. And like today to compare today to 10 or 11 years ago, it's light years different and it's, it's much harder today, but it's still easy. 
right? Like the way you teach it, like it's still real. It's still very lucrative again, by smart credit card habits. So like, if you think it's too good to be true now, like I've gone through so many iterations of like, wow, this is crazy. And it was, and the credit card companies have gotten a lot smarter, but it's still very doable with, again, being a good consumer, having a 700 plus credit rating, being somebody who they want to have as a customer, right? And like, and not, you're not gaming the system. You're not doing anything crazy. Like you're following the rules. And you're earning these massive sign-up bonuses and it, and it, it just works. It really does. And I like your point about having a system is important. And that is where I have tried to step into the travel reward space and offer people a system, right? An actual process that you can put on autopilot, as you said, once you get it working. And then it's simple and it just works so that it doesn't have to take up your whole life trying to <laughs> try to figure that out all the time. But right, exactly. Um, okay. Tell us where we can find you online. Yeah. So uh, I guess uh, the easiest place would be, so if, if you're listening to this as a podcast, you have a podcast player, just search, choose, like make a choice. So choose FI for financial independence and just get started. We actually have, I think it's 630 episodes. So it's a lot, but uh, if you're looking for the conceptual framework of financial independence, go way back to episode 100 and then just pick and choose or or honestly start from the beginning. I actually just wound up listening to the early episodes and they still hold up till today. And it just all builds on itself. And it's really just just a way to kind of rethink your life and just win while living a wonderful life. I think that's that's our biggest message. So yeah, Chooseify the podcast. I have a newsletter you can get on chooseify.com slash subscribe, but, but listen to the podcast first and then, uh, then sign up for the newsletter. All right, fantastic. So make sure you go check out the Chooseify podcast. It's awesome. Um, super enlightening conversation today. So thank you so much for, for joining me, Brad. And uh, we'll see everyone on next week's episode.